So I'm at lunch and I'm about to have some rice, some black beans there, a little bit of avocado. As you can see, like the beans are overtaking this. It's a whole can of beans in here. And then some grape tomatoes thrown in there as well. So it's a nice big hearty bowl. For dessert, I have a thing of strawberries in here, maybe like 10 to 15 of them. But I'm gonna set this down because we need to talk. There's a recent article that was posted on Dr. McDougall's website and it was authored by Jeff Novick. He's a dietitian, plant-based dietitian. And he was talking about the Beyond Meat Burger and basically calling it pure crap. And by crap, he means calorie rich and processed, which is true, it's very high in calories. And it is processed. I'm going to throw up the food label right here. And he was basically saying that you should never eat the Beyond Meat burger. No exceptions. Not once in a while. Basically never because it's just not healthy. And I believe Dr. McDougall shares the same opinion. But uh, I know Jeff wrote that he doesn't claim to be part of the vegan movement or call himself a vegan dietitian or anything like that. He's just a dietitian. Someone who's here to spread the message of health and that's pretty much it and so i kind of wanted to give my thoughts on this topic as a nutritionist and as a vegan i've had the beyond meat burger i think it tastes pretty good but my thoughts on it are 100 percent. i don't think that it's a health food i am on the same boat as jeff novick dr mcdougall I don't think that it's a healthy food. It's loaded in oil, salt, it is high in calories, it's processed, it's got the protein isolates which have been shown to increase IGF-1 in the body, probably not the best for your kidneys, not the best source of protein that you can eat as opposed to like, I believe they use pea protein isolate. So in comparison to peas, peas are gonna be way better than the isolate form that they use in the Beyond Meat Burger, but they have to use the isolates in order to make the formula and make the burger seem like an actual real burger. So health-wise, I am on the same boat as Jeff, but I personally believe that it's awesome that it exists because it's a great transition food for new vegans for people that want to have it every once in a while. Jeff doesn't believe so. He says you should go from eating a meat-based diet all the way to a whole food plant-based diet. And I think that would be awesome if everyone did that. Like I would love to get people to eat a black bean burger instead. I think that's a healthier option, still tastes amazing. I actually have my own recipe in my ebook of an awesome tasty black bean burger. I make it like every week. But the reality is not everyone does that. Me personally, as you guys saw, I love eating whole foods. I had a rice and beans bowl. I had fruit. That's good enough for me. I didn't have like any sauces on there. Minimal salt, whatever was in the can already. And I already rinsed the beans through before to get rid of the excess salt. So I love eating healthy and I help my clients try to eat as healthy as possible. And I always promote whole foods. Like as a nutritionist, that is what I recommend is eating whole foods, period. But if somebody comes to me and says, look, I'm eating meat right now, the vegan thing, it's hard. I can't transition to eating a plant-based diet. Like I want to eat meat. That's where the Beyond Meat Burger, in my opinion, comes into play. Cause then you can say to them, all right, well, have you tried the Beyond Meat Burger? I mean, it tastes amazing. You know, you can try that, see if you like it. Maybe you can give up your normal, regular McDonald's cheeseburgers or Five Guys or whatever you're eating. Try it out, see how it works for you. And by giving them an option, I feel like as a nutritionist, that opens their mind up to other possibilities, to being more open to eating more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, because they have kind of like something there that they can use whenever they crave meat or any other animal product. Like I think this video is gonna apply to basically all the vegan junk food. There's plant-based milks, people can transition using that and get rid of the dairy. There's vegan cheeses out there. Basically there's a vegan alternative for everything. You know, can we recommend these fake meats out there? Oh. I've heard Dr. McDougall say that these isolated proteins can even promote insulin like growth factor one in the body. Is that safe to promote those types of foods to people that are transitioning? Well, you know, we, it's important not to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. In other words, it's like 
you know, you don't want to have this like you either eat the standard American diet or you eat this perfect whole food, you know, or or you're having a kale salad for lunch. You tell that to people, right? And you're, I mean, it's just people are going to glaze over and think you're crazy, right? So these are fantastic transition foods, right? These are the kind of comfort foods that people kind of grow up with. Their taste buds have adapted to. Um, so I think it's great for people to be able to um, move on to these foods and be like, hey, I can eat like a before, but all of a sudden my diet has zero cholesterol, which is only found essentially in, in animal foods, no saturated animal fat, much healthier. Um, now, you know, is, is it healthy as broccoli? No, no one's saying it's healthy as broccoli, but it's a tremendous step. I mean, imagine if we did that. You know, I have a lot of videos on the site showing remarkable effects of even, you know, cutting down saturated fat 15%, like practicing meatless Mondays. Right? I mean, so that's all they're doing. It's one day of the week, and you can see remarkable benefits. It's not black and white. You know, I show the, in my Uprooting Leading Causes of Death video, you know, when you look at hypertension, diabetes, you know, some of the leading killers, obesity, you look at the leading cause of vision loss, cataracts. It's not like, you know, uh, meat eaters have 100% of the risk, and then flexitarians and ovo vegetarians and pescatarians have 100%, and then vegans, you know, down to 40% or 25%. No. It's the stepwise drop in risk. The more and more plant-based one eats, the more benefits accrue. True to fully maximize, to fully exploit the power of diet to lower the risk of chronic disease, you really have to do move towards the end of the plant-based spectrum, but every step along the way counts. So I think it's fantastic when these new products come out like Beyond Meat and things, and people can't even tell the difference. Your body can tell the difference, though so all of a sudden you ate something with fiber, all of a sudden you ate something you know, they didn't have any cholesterol. Um, and so, uh, you know, people aren't going to jump straight to broccoli. And so, you know, I, I just, I, I would hope people don't dead end on those products, right? I want people to continue to move. But in terms of getting them to start the transition, fantastic. I think we need more of them. I think they need to be, you know, how like, you know, soy milk, almond milk is in the dairy case next to dairy milk. Well, there, there should be Beyond Meat in the meat case. Like next to chicken meat, there's the Beyond Meat, you know. And people can be like, oh, wait a second. It's just as cheap and, you know, it doesn't have any cholesterol. Hey, this is great. You know, they're never going to have broccoli in the meat case, right? Um, uh, but so while we still have meat cases, might just have healthier options in there. So for people transitioning, I think it's great. I know Jeff went through the comments of that post and he saw that a lot of people were posting about you know, it being a transition food and it's great for that, but I don't think he agrees on it. But you gotta understand food, it goes beyond just health. Food impacts our environment, it impacts the animals. Like, f food is not just what goes in our body, like, it affects so many other things. Like, I, I, I consider all that stuff. So you look at the Beyond Meat burger versus a regular burger. Yeah, sure. Health-wise, they're probably not that different. And I'm not going to claim one is healthier than the other. I like to think that the Beyond Meat burger is going to be healthier than a regular burger. But they're both like really high in fat, probably high in sodium, all that stuff. But when it comes to the environment, it is way more sustainable to grow plants and feed them to humans instead of livestock and using so much resources towards animal agriculture to make a regular burger where you can just have a plant-based option. Big, big difference when it comes to the, the environment impact and also the animals. I mean, there's like absolutely no argument. Eating a Beyond Meat burger is more ethical. I should say not more ethical, it is ethical. And eating a non-vegan burger is not ethical. My message is still the same. Eat a whole food, plant-based diet. Like even if you're a vegan and you're eating a lot of junk food, you can still have health problems. If you're eating Beyond Meat burgers every day, you're probably not gonna be that healthy. I did a video with my friend Chris Cooney, AKA the vegan zombie, and he showed his blood work after being vegan for 24 years and his cholesterol was high. And after switching for about a month on a whole food plant-based diet, he was able to lower his cholesterol levels. I think that says something. If you are vegan, it does not mean that you're healthy or unhealthy. You have to eat whole plant-based foods. You have to eat real foods. But I'm not gonna tell people not to eat the Beyond Meat burger. That's their choice. If people wanna eat the Beyond Meat burger or vegan junk food, that is their choice. I just wanna inform people 
what will probably happen if they go down that route, but I like giving people more options as well. So if your goal is to be as healthy as possible, to reach the best fitness levels, to get your best blood work results, anything like that, to reverse diseases, you have to eat a whole food plant-based diet. If you wanna eat the Beyond Meat burger every once in a while, if you're transitioning, you know, if you wanna go for some of the vegan alternatives, that's fine. Like I said, I think there's a lot of environmental and ethical benefits of choosing options like that. And so, yeah, I agree and I disagree with Jeff Novick. I think he's a great dietitian. I think he has a lot of great things to say. I've actually featured him in some of my videos, but I think we should be considerate of like the whole picture, the big picture. And that is the Beyond Meat Burger is a great transitional food. It's great for the environment or way better than eating an animal-based diet. And it is an ethical food anyway that's how i feel about it i don't know if you guys agree or disagree let me know in the comments down below if you guys think we should be telling people not to eat the beyond meat burger and just a 100 percent healthy whole food plant-based diet and yeah sorry i had to do this video in my car and not too fancy or anything like that but these days i don't have much time so i gotta crank videos out when i can i'm gonna go ahead and eat my lunch and i'll see you guys in the next video